Hi, I'm Monica and let's talk about the books I read this November. I read six books this month, four of them being fantasy, one was a contemporary, and one was a dystopian. Let's just get started onto my first book that I read this month, which was The Illuminaries by Susan Denard, and I rated this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars. For this one, I did upload a more full in-depth review of that and I'll link that in the eye above and in the description box below. It was like a joint book review with another book that I'm going to be talking about quite soon. But The Illuminaries is set in the town of Hemlock Falls that has living nightmares roaming their forest. And in this town, there's an ancient order who protects the townsfolk as well as the rest of the world from these monsters. And as you know it, our main character, Winnie Wednesday, she wants to join this order not only to protect her town, but also to restore her family name. So very quickly with my overall thoughts on the Illuminaries, the premise was very interesting and it did remind me of early 2010s paranormal YA fantasy books, which I really did enjoy. But it followed the typical YA fantasy plot where we have the main character who is an outcast who needs to go through three trials to prove her worth and that's exactly what happened in this book. I felt like there was nothing new or groundbreaking that was brought with this book and I wanted something fresh. However, the writing is fantastic, but I think it's third person present tense that was making the reading of this book a little bit off for me. I think it's just personal preference. Although I did really like Winnie as a character and she is that awkward outcast who is very intelligent. And I also loved learning about the lore and the different monsters that were in this book. Other than that, um, this book was quite predictable and I wanted more but I didn't receive that. Anyways, let's just move on to the, my next book which was a, an adult contemporary and it is The Bandit Bookshop of Maggie Banks by Shauna Robinson. And I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. Again, this is the second book with that joint book review that I mentioned in the Illuminary section and that will be linked down in the description box below for my full thoughts on this book. Again, a very brief and quick review on this book. We are following Maggie Banks who is kind of finding her passion right now and in the midst of that, she decides to help her best friend run her bookstore in a small town while she's giving birth to her second child. And in this bookstore, there are limitations on what books can be sold, being only classics, which then prompts Maggie to then secretly sell more modern books to the townsfolk, and that brings a whole lot of other problems. <laughs> this book was a very quick and lighthearted read for me, and I was pleasantly surprised by it. And I really did love Maggie with her distracted mind and finding her joy in books because she's not one that was a reader before she started working at the bookstore. She comes up with quite creative solutions for the selling of the banned books and it was really delightful to have that small town setting with a tight-knit community. There is a romance in this contemporary and it was quite steady and stable but it wasn't super exciting. I really did enjoy the comedic moments that we got in this book. The next book I read was one that I've been meaning to pick up for quite a while and it was Circe by Madeline Miller. I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars and in this book we are following Circe who is the daughter of the sun god Helios. And Circe is living in idyllic times with her fellow immortals and gods and not much has been going on for her and although she is the butt of her siblings jokes, her life is monotonous and there's nothing really exciting. However, Susie then learns that she has the power of witchcraft and really quickly she is then banished to an island by Zeus. There on the island, Circe learns to hone her witchcraft and she also encounters a lot of other mythological figures. Overall, I really did like this Greek mythology retelling of Circe's story. Although it was quite slow paced for me because it is very character driven but the writing itself is very lyrical and descriptive and that is what makes Circe's world so immersive while you read this book. I did enjoy the contrast of Circe's experience living as a nymph amongst these powerful immortal gods and she does go on a journey of growth of gaining and learning about her independence and what that means for her. Many events do happen to Cersei, like there's no consequence of her 
actions, although her entire ex exile on the island is a consequence of her action, I just felt that there wasn't for direction within Cersei's story and she just had events happen to her. Although with all of those troubles coming her way, she does learn to persevere and overcome them and also gain a lot more power. With the slow pace of this book, I think it does emulate of how it would be to live like an immortal because days to them feels like seconds and years to them feels like days. So I think that slow pace throughout the book really did capture that element. Overall, I think the best part of this book was Cersei's journey from living in the divine lands with the immortals to them becoming exiled and learning to become more mortal-like and living as a human and also learning the realities of things. But I think Cersei, at the end of the book, she does learn to make her own decisions and she's happy about where she's at and I love that for her. <laughs> I actually do have a copy of Madeline Miller's other book, The Song of Achilles, which I do think will be more of my taste. And I think I will continue exploring this author's backlist. I think she's coming out with another book soon. I'm not sure, but I will get to The Song of Achilles soon. But overall, Cersei was a good mythological retelling. I just wished that there was a little bit more forward movement within Cersei's own actions and stories, but I really did enjoy the overall book. The next book that I did finish was Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng, and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. In this one, we are following 12-year-old Bird Gardner, who is just living his life with his father, who was a former linguistics professor and now shelves books at the Harvard University. But Bird's existence isn't one full of life, since he has learned to keep his head down and keep to himself. And that's because we're set in America, and over the past decade, there has been new sets of laws being written to preserve American culture, known as PACT. The authorities have granted permission for the relocation of children, especially of those of Asian descent, and they are also urging the libraries to ban and destroy any books that are considered unpatriotic, including the book of poetry by Bird's mother. The thing is, with Bird's mother, she disappeared three years ago, and Bird doesn't really want anything to do with her, but once a mysterious letter with a strange drawing shows up addressed to Bird, he then can't help himself and he goes and embarks on a journey to find his mom. For me, dystopians really need to be specifically crafted in terms of their readability and plot for me to enjoy them. With Our Missing Hearts being my first completed Celeste Ng book, this one was very heavy-hearted and rightfully so because it explores the what-if of a dystopian world becoming into reality and the consequences of that. And this book does touch upon on how small acts can be very powerful in a rebellion. I noticed from the get-go that this book was very slow-paced and it was very focused on the characters, which is not something that I would typically pick up, but in this world it was interesting to see from the lens of a 12-year-old of how the after effects of a pact had on him and it did remind me of the tv show the handmaid's tale although like they're completely different oppressive natures they do carry similarities of the tone of despair and having hopes and small acts of rebellion against the oppressive society and they did have that in common so it did remind me of the tv show while bird is searching for his mother he navigates the world in like a dream state type of mind because he's seeing the signs of the discrimination as well as the oppressive nature of things. Meanwhile, he knows how to fit in into that world without raising many red flags. Bird does really have a sweet relationship with his father and a delicate one that's being repaired with his mother. And I did mention that we are reading through the lens of Bird, but that was only for the first half of the book and we we're seeing like the after effects of Pact happening while the second half of the book was more focused on how Pact became to be and the build up to that law through Bird's mother's point of view. I felt like that really slowed down my reading momentum even more. Nonetheless, the writing was elegant and deep. I really do think this author can truly write well. There is 
the tackling of many different types of issues such as the rise of Asian hate from COVID, racism, discrimination, separation of families, and the removal and destruction of books. There was a lot of different like things being balanced in this book. It felt like there was too much on this book's plate to address everything. In the end, I really did enjoy the story about a boy and a mother who is standing up for what's right and that's going against this pact law. I did want to see more development of the world but maybe through a different method of storytelling because although this one is very character focused, I just thought the nature of it was so slow for me to read. But I do think I will still pick up um, Celeste Ng's backlist. The next book I read was Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This was my second time reading this book and I did upload a reading vlog of my thoughts of this book. And if you're interested in that, I'll link that up in the eye above and in the description box below. Very quickly, this book is about a group of six ragtag teenagers who come together to perform a very risky heist. Although the first time I read this book was when it was first released back in 2015, seven years ago, it did feel like coming back to very familiar characters and I did feel it was very nostalgic for me. One thing that did take me out of this book was I think the constant backstories that we were getting for all six characters, which is necessary for you to learn and connect more deeply with them. I just felt maybe you could have done in a more elegant way but I think I've just been in the Grisha verse universe for so long now and with the TV show adaptation, I just feel like I already know these characters so well. So reading about their backstories again, it felt very repetitive to me, but that's just me coming from knowing them for so long. Otherwise, I really love the action, the writing, and getting back into the world of the drags and Ketterdam. It was just a really nice delight to read about again. And the last book that I did end up finishing was an adult fantasy and it is The Orange of the Priory Tree by Samantha Shannon. And I'm not going to hold up this book for this entire portion of the video. I did rate this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book used to be a standalone but now it's getting a prequel and a sequel. So with that, it does have many thematic focuses. The world itself is very complex and there are many characters, many different names and locations that you learn. We have four main points of views and although there are many different additional characters with each perspective, it was a little bit difficult for me to connect to some of these characters, although my favorites were first Ied, I think that's how you say her name, spelled E-A-D, and Iad is the outsider of the court in Innes located in the west. And the other main perspective I really enjoyed was Tane, who is learning to become a dragon rider in the east. Because there is an impending war as well as tensions between the east and the west of this continent, there's a lot of buildup that needs to be done and establishment of the tensions of past centuries between these two countries, I believe. So there was a lot of buildup of establishing that conflict, interlacing religion, politics, as well as magic. And there are also talking dragons in this book and they do play a very pivotal part in the war. The battle sequences were short-lived and a little bit unexciting and I thought maybe the writing could have been a little bit more detailed in the action sense. Despite all of those things, I did think the winning moments in this book were the strong female characters and leaders as well as the development of romance in Iad's point of view. The characters are really the ones that shown throughout the entire book for me in terms of their friendships, relationships, and the development of their own character journeys and we do have LGBTQ plus rep. The writing is very descriptive but very easy to consume and I do think this author is one to be very descriptive and character driven and having that really in-depth character growth. So I'm quite impressed at Samantha Shannon's ability to craft this world because it's very complex and multi-layered. And although reading this book did feel like 800 pages, I did really enjoy learning about the character. The ending was a bit lackluster and bittersweet, 
However, I think that does fit into the theme and rhythms of this particular fantasy world. I will be picking up the prequel slash sequel whenever they do release. And this was one of my most intimidating books that I was scared to pick up and read. And I'm glad that I did try it out and, and see if I agreed with the hype or not. Those were all the books that I read for the month of November. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified of when I upload next. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!